what is up guys welcome back to a, another video really am glad you're here today man i'm just in a whole different space today and we'll uh, we'll talk about it right that's what today's video is about so today's topic is you're exhausted because you're still holding on mm. does that hit home with you you tired you tired you tired because you're doing stuff maybe sure but are you exhausted because you are still <clears throat> holding on to so much of your past arguments things people have said drama from yesterday situations at work life or are you good at letting go of all the mental debris the mental clutter that we're bombarded with every day are you good at letting go of the emotional energy that you're holding on to all the pain the anger the resentment from the past situations relationships all these things are you still holding on to those things could be why you're exhausted because god dude, that is quite tiring <laughs> to lug around all that emotional baggage and the crazy thing about it is most people are not aware that they're doing this and even if they are that they you know have this stuff they hold on to still most people don't know how to let go of it and so we still hold on to it we carry around all of this stuck energy with us and it's exhausting uh, one of the examples through one of the workshops courses i did a long time ago always talked about holding a beach ball underneath the water now imagine that beach ball is gigantic like a huge beach ball that you would have to use literally all your strength to hold on into the water now imagine the beach ball represents all the unchecked drama, all the emotions, all the mental crap you have in your mind that's repressed or suppressed that you haven't let go of. Imagine how much energy it's taking for you to just hold that beach ball underwater. <clears throat> what would you do with that energy if you just let it go? All that stuff came to the surface and now you have all this extra energy that you were using to hold that ball down. Now you have it to what? Create your dreams? find your purpose attract in the partner that you want because you're working on yourself you have time to work out now you're not worried about all this stuff anymore and that's what most people do we spend so much time and energy pushing down all of this stuff from the past that we haven't let go to and it just drains us of our energy and it's mostly like i said unconscious for a lot of people me included and i'll share that so it's funny yesterday i made a video and for whatever reason the file got corrupted and I had to go to work. I just didn't have time to like do another one. I didn't really want to anyways. Um, so clearly that video wasn't supposed to come out, but it was about anxiety. And it was about anxiety. And what I had become aware of in myself is I had so much anxiety built up that was kind of hiding. And it was there. I just wasn't fully aware of it, but I could just feel it. I'm like, why am I still so uneasy? Why am I having all these thoughts of like doubt coming up about, you know, this new situation I'm in with my job, with uh, me moving to a new city? I was like, why the hell am I still all worked up? Like I'm grounding. I'm like clear. I'm like, what is it that I need to become aware of in myself that I'm holding on to or that's messing with me? And it was so much anxiety in my chest and it was anxiety due to uncertainty and what I'll say is most people, and it's funny, this is the quote that I wrote, one of them at the end by Tit Nhat Han, rest in peace. And it's about, you know, most people would let go or they'd rather hold on to the pain that's familiar rather than go into the unknown, which is unfamiliar because we fear the unknown. And that's what is anxiety. We're worried about the future. We don't trust in the divine that things are going to work out the way that we want them to work out or in, that are in our best interest. So we hold on to the familiar past, even though it's pain. But by holding on to all that past, we're literally blocking ourselves from creating something new. Because how can we create something new and we're still holding on to this stuff from the past? You're gonna have all this crap from the past come back and haunt you because you haven't cleared the energy, you haven't cleared the space. So we'll talk about that today. Clear your mental space and your emotional energy your emotional space, your emotional body. That's what most people hold on to. And when we hold on to the emotional energy, the pain, the resentment, the anger, the grief, sadness, et cetera, et cetera. What we don't understand a lot of the times we're not mindful of is that all the negative thinking or the mental clutter is simply being, uh, it is a manifestation of all the emotional energy. So all the emotional energy 
you know, the sadness, the anger, resentment is creating these negative thought patterns. And then we become overwhelmed by the thoughts because our little human brains are trying to figure out a solution to the problem. But the problem, the solution is very simple. Just a matter of letting go of the emotional energy. It's not necessarily easy, but it's very simple to do. It's just like getting in shape. Getting in shape is actually extremely simple. You just gotta exercise, work out, maybe lift some weights, do it, do physical activity, and you just gotta eat less food or eat healthier food. It's literally that simple, and you know this. But, and it is difficult or can be difficult. So simple and difficult is not easy, right? Easy and difficult, simple and complex, right? There's two layers there. Simple, complex, easy, difficult. Now, this is very simple, but it is challenging. It's very difficult for most people until, like we always talk about, you practice these things and it becomes easier. You might even notice today on camera, like my demeanor's a little different. I'm way more grounded, I'm way more chill because yesterday having that breakthrough, or is it two days ago? I don't even know. Hey, it's 11-11, what do you know? Um, my demeanor's different because a lot of the anxiety that I was harboring in my chest, this fear of the unknown, the doubts were because I had this emotion stuck in my chest. Literally, I was like, I became aware of it and I was like, I'm so anxious, my chest is so tight, I literally can't breathe, uh, like I was so tight. So again, we become aware of our thoughts, of our physical well-being, of what our bodies are telling us, this emotional energy, this fear I had in my chest, now that I addressed it, and I'll talk about the mechanism I used to address it and let go of it. You know, I'm, I'm very, I'm much more relaxed. I'm also a little tired because I had a busy night at work and I have a busy day today, but anyways, um, it remains the same. I definitely, my demeanor has changed because I addressed the anxiety and the fear that was harbored in my chest, the emotional energy. We get bombarded with clutter every single day. News, social media, family stuff, drama from friends, situations at work, disagreements, uh, a long to-do list that we never seem to get done. We'll make another video about that, right, if you're that. So we tend to start overthinking things because we're trying to solve the problem, but it's actually very simple. The book that I started reading, and I'm only like, I don't know, I'm like in the first chapter, but it's already, you know, it's one of those things I'm just kind of like taking a bite of it and then just sitting there and enjoying it. And real, this is not a book you just read through, right? Um, it's a book you read a page and chill out and digest the material and apply it. That's what I always try to do. It's called Letting Go by Dr. David R. Hawkins. If you want to take a look at it, if you want to read the book and that resonates with you when you look it up, I recommend reading his first book, Power vs. Forced. Dr. David R. Hawkins, Power vs. Forced, gives you a map of consciousness, helps you understand. Um, and I remember there's some powerful mechanisms there. He's just, it's just so simple. That's the thing. It's like, I think Albert Einstein said, is like, true genius is simplicity. The most complex problems actually have a simple solution to them. But our human brains, we try to overcomplicate things. But this is what leads to anxiety, overthinking. Uh, if you're an overthinker, you're overthinking things. The solution's actually probably very simple. It may not be easy to do. It's probably very simple. So, we pile this stuff up either intentionally or unintentionally but it accumulates nonetheless. What am I talking about? The argument you had with your spouse, your significant other three months ago, you kind of cleared the air, at least you get along, but you never really cleared the air. You never said what you wanted to say, neither did they, so the space is still dingy, still dirty as I like to call it. It's not a clean, clear space. When you walk into a nice you know, space, whether it, like physically, we all know the difference. You walk into a house that you just cleaned after being gone for like all day, like yesterday you did this crazy cleaning or in the morning you did, spent three hours cleaning your apartment or your house, you had to go do some stuff. It's nice to come back to a clean space. You can feel how different that energy is in your environment when your apartment, when your physical space is clean and clear. It's the same thing with our mental and emotional space, guys, and our spiritual space, right? You can feel when you're cluttered mentally and emotionally. You can feel it in your body, you're uptight, you know? You're, and yesterday, gosh, I wish that video would've came through, but I talked about dissociation, about how when we feel stress, mental and emotional stress, we disassociate from our bodies. 
we get on our phones, we go play video games, we read a book, we have to listen to music in the background. We can't just sit there and be with what we need to be with in order for it to dissipate. It's very important. When we don't clear the mental clutter, we lack clarity of focus and space to receive our intuitive guidance. So if you're overthinking things and you're so stressed out mentally, you're probably anxious or depressed or upset or whatever emotionally and that's creating the negative or mental clutter and so we lack that focus. When we don't have the space because we're overthinking, how can we receive our intuitive guidance? There's too much crap there, there's too much trash in the way, there's too many weeds in the garden. You got to go in, you got to pull the weeds out and create a fertile soil for the downloads to come, for your intuitive guidance to come through, for the answers and the solutions to your problems to come through. But it's very closely related. Your mental and emotional state are one and the same. Because again, if you're sitting here and you're so pissed off, well, anything and anyone that comes your way, if you're carrying that screwed up, angry, emotional resentment in your heart, no matter what situation you are encountering in the work or in the world and how you choose to go about it, you're going to have angry thoughts about it because you're carrying an angry emotional energy. It makes sense, right? Like I'm not talking rocket science here. It's just many things that we're often not aware of or don't spend time thinking about and reflecting on. So again, what's the solution? We have to clear our mental and emotional space in order for us to become grounded, become relaxed and peaceful so that we can have our intuitive guidance come through and think clearly and focus on what it is we need to focus on in order to solve that problem what we're trained to do well when we get triggered people places situations these things it creates emotional clutter and, and build up right the argument you had uh with your significant other so now you're like super on edge and this guy pulls out in front of you and semi cuts you off he's not even really cutting you off but that was the trigger you needed oh that mother that guy uh, see what i'm saying it's like this underlying tone that just pervades throughout your day and everything you do because it's your life and you're carrying that stuff so we have to learn to let go mentally and emotionally over time if we don't clear the negative emotional energy or mental debris and mental debris we become overwhelmed we become overwhelmed and we become anxious and we tend to shut down we tend to dissociate so when the unchecked emotion goes on for so long we numb it we just suppress it and we repress it. But over time, again, taking so much energy using the beach ball example to repress and suppress our emotions, we become so overwhelmed and so exhausted that we tend to just shut down. And then we just go on social media, we smoke weed, um, you know, you become a workaholic, you do something to distract yourself from the unchecked, repressed emotional energy and suppressed emotional energy. And there's a couple of reasons that we do that repressed and suppressed emotions they lead to undesirable thoughts and behaviors so again if you're having uh maybe we'll use a different example so maybe somebody uh, at work this girl made a comment about your weight and you are so she like triggered you and you're angry and you're pissed off and you're also very sad and you've got this unchecked emotional energy everybody else becomes an outlet for that unchecked emotional energy the sadness the anger you carry now everyone has to deal with you projecting that unchecked repressed emotions because they're dealing with you and you're carrying that energy most people repress and suppress emotions for a couple of reasons one because it's uh at first it's painful to confront because we don't want to feel that pain because we're wired to not feel that pain so again we dissociate with video games with sex with drugs with alcohol gambling workaholism the list goes on there's a myriad of ways that we repress and suppress our emotion we just simply avoid it what you have to understand is that emotion is energy in motion emotion is energy in motion in motion so if you're repressing and you're suppressing your emotions, you're literally blocking the energy, flow, the, the energy flow, the life force of the life that wants to come and move through you. So you can't move forward because you're holding on to the past. You have stuck energy. The energy is not in emotion. The emotions are repressed. They're stuck deep down. You've got to let go of the emotion so that the energy can move in motion. You can get rid of the bad stuff. Now you have space again for the beautiful new energy relationships, blessings, situations, miracles that come into your life. Energy and motion. Emotion is energy and motion. 
So when we suppress the emotion, you're blocking energy coming in and out of our lives. Life is a natural flow. Imagine, you know, hopefully you've never been constipated, but if you've ever been constipated, you're literally blocked up. Nothing can move through your physical body. Here's the thing. It's the same thing with your emotions. When your emotions are constipated, you have so much emotional shit in you, it's not moving through you. So you're blocking that. You're clogged up emotionally. That's why it's hard to be happy. That's why it's hard to focus and concentrate. You may, you don't have ADD. You're distracting yourself and you're dissociated. So you haven't been practicing concentrating, but it's hard to concentrate because you're blocked because every time you sit still, you've got so much repressed emotion and energy in motion that's not being moved. You're blocked. So it's hard to focus. It's hard to concentrate because you're blocked up, man. You gotta let that go, sis. You gotta let that stuff go. Sometimes we're not, or most times, most people are not aware that they're doing this. They're, we're not aware that we're suppressed and repressed because we're trained to do that from a, a young age, especially men. Don't show your emotion. Don't cry. Don't be a baby. Don't be a little bitch. So we suppress our emotions. Or, you know, you had a toxic parent and every time you felt or cried, don't cry. Don't cry about it. You know, uh, what are you crying about? I'll give you something to cry about, right? You're like shamed for expressing emotion. This is how society runs. It's, it's part of a deeper system. That's what the system wants you to do though so that you become a numbed out drone on pills reliant on their stuff. But I digress, that's a whole other thing. We have to become aware of what we're feeling in our emotions. It's in our bodies. It's in our minds. Your mind, your body is speaking to you. The question is, are you listening? Are you tuning into what it's telling you? And it's difficult. Like I said, I consider myself to be somewhat aware. But I'm also, no, I don't know a dang thing. But I consider myself to be aware, more aware than most people that I encounter on a day-to-day -day basis. But it doesn't matter how aware or unaware you are, this stuff still creeps up. Because like I said the other day, I had no, I didn't realize. Like I, I sensed it and I felt it and I kept searching for it and I was looking for it. I was like, why am I still so uneasy? <laughs> why am I still so scared and feel so inadequate and like unconfident about going into work and doing what I do? I've done this for so long in so many ways. Like sure, this is kind of an elevated circumstance, which is great. It's causing me to grow or it's promoting growth within me, but I'm still so uneasy. Like, I'm like, God, I'm so insecure about this. Like, I feel like I'm going to screw up. And then, of course, by not addressing that emotion, that ends up manifesting because that's what I'm carrying around. Everything's energy. You know that. You're a light worker. You're a starseed. You're a highly sensitive person. You're an empath. You're super sensitive. So it's even more important for us to get in touch with our emotions and our feelings because that's our work with the energy and even if you're not an empath or you know a sensitive person all this stuff you're still a human being and the reality is everybody is the people that aren't are probably the most sensitive they're probably just have repressed and suppressed it the most and for so long that you know and and have these belief systems about feeling emotions and sensitivity and all this stuff that it blocks them but again i digress emotion energy emotion we got to release this stuff guys think about it this way Oh, the second way. So most people don't uh, know how they're not aware that they're suppressing and repressing their emotions. And the people that are, they're terrified of expressing it because they really don't know how because it's been bottled up for so long. Well, how do I do this in a healthy way? So just like the beach ball, instead of it being super pumped up in this literally eight foot beach ball or whatever, no matter how strong or weak you are, imagine a beach ball that no matter how strong you are, there's so much air in it. It takes all your effort. I'm a pretty strong, dude. Like as big ass beach ball underwater, I would be exhausted after a while. But think about it like this. You don't have to let it all out at once. It doesn't have to come out and like that beach ball just explodes and water gets everywhere. What if you just open that beach ball up and just let a little bit of the air out? And then all of a sudden it'd be less energy to hold it underwater. And then when everything does come to the surface, it wouldn't be this big explosion. It would just be this ooh, boom. nice little mellow little, you know, buoyant beach ball and eventually it, it's completely empty it's just chilling floating on the surface man the crazy little download i had right now is i got this visual of a surface of water your conscious being above the water your subconscious being underneath the water imagine that beach ball when it's flat and there's no barrier and your subconscious and your conscious are connected Ooh, that was crazy that was an interesting little download i don't know if you get, 
you know, I'm sure you did get that because you're watching this channel. So, you know, you're in tune, man, sis, you're getting it. So uh, another way to think about it is like this. People go on physical detoxes all the time with their physical detox. I'm going to, I'm going to fast, which I do promote. I'm going to go on a, a juice cleanse and stuff, which I don't necessarily promote. But again, that's just me personally. It's whatever resonates with you. And we'll talk about that also when we get into ways to let this energy go. People go on physical detoxes all the time. Water fast, food, you know, I'm going to go on a fast in general. I'm going to go on this diet. I'm only going to eat vegetables. I'm only going to eat grapefruit. I'm going vegan. I'm going vegetarian. I'm only, I'm going to go paleo. I'm going to go uh, keto, whatever it is, right? They go on these diets to like detox their body and do something. So we go on a physical detox, but we never really, how often do we do a mental and emotional detox? Not a lot. And again, it doesn't have to be this big thing. There are tools that I'm going to share with you right now where it can be chill, it can be smooth. It doesn't have to be big. So if you, what you what I would recommend is if you're someone that this resonates, video is resonating with, and I'm assuming it is at this point because we're 21 minutes in, if you're still listening, clearly the message is resonating with you. Instead of doing it all at once, you can if you want. You go on a mental and emotional detox on the daily, just a little bit. So very simple techniques that I'll share with you. And again, none of this stuff's groundbreaking. I think a lot of the times, again, our ego wants to overcomplicate things, but genius is the simplicity. These things I'll share with you, if you do them, they are so simple and accessible to everyone, it really will improve your life. But immediately, and notice if I, as if I bring these things up, you're, you automatically go, oh, I already know that, I already do that, I, or whatever, I already got that. Great, that's already, you know that. So are you practicing it, are you doing it? Or is your ego like, I already know that, whatever, I'm, it didn't work for me. Did you do it long enough? Did you do it with intention? It doesn't take much. We just got to do a little each day. But, you know, if I say these things, your ego's like, oh, whatever, you know? Again, that's you blocking yourself. That's unchecked uh, emotion. You know, if you consider yourself an open-minded person, I'm sharing these things, and you're like, ah, oh, whatever. Was that being open-minded? I don't know. So the simple techniques, the first one that popped into my mind was literally just, you, I mean, you hear this stuff online. I'm not the only person saying these things, you know, I'm not doing anything groundbreaking. My hopes is by me sharing it, you know, we hear things from different people in different ways and that guy or that girl didn't resonate with us, but maybe they did. So the first one is just go out in nature, take your shoes off, take your socks off, put your feet in the grass. If you have sand near the beach, go in the beach, go dip in the ocean. It's literally most, the most cleansing thing you can do to cleanse your energy and your aura. Go and chill outside. Go on the mountains. Go on a hike. Be in nature. Be in nature. Be in nature. Because nature's not going to bombard you with all this social media stuff and videos and uh, public drama and whatever. And, uh, you know, um, all this stuff. Nature's just going to be out there. You're going to be chill. You're going to be in silence. You're going to be relaxed. Just being out there will literally clear your aura. And if you ground, you take your shoes off. Put your feet in the grass, the sand, on the dirt up in a mountain somewhere I promise you like there's scientific studies now about this stuff about how the negative electrons in your body are being transferred in the earth it's called grounding literally changes your chemistry go ground be in nature meditate mental clarity meditate is not controlling your thoughts meditate meditating is learning to be the observer behind your thoughts and letting your thoughts pass by as you let your thoughts pass by it's like letting a balloon that's full of helium dissipate in the atmosphere. You're letting go. As you let go, let go, you are creating clarity because now all the trash is going in and going out. You're just taking out the mental trash. And all of a sudden, you're centered, you're clear, you're relaxed. You think solutions will come to you because now the space is there because you don't have the mental clutter. Meditate. Write. This is, I, I've shared this many times. I write pretty much, I have since, especially since doing videos again, writing every day, my big ass journal. And I just write my thoughts out. Man, that guy last night was such a dick, blah, blah, blah. Okay, what is it I in him I see in me? What what made that uncomfortable? How do I want to go about this situation? What's the energy I'm holding on to? I ask, I ask myself these questions and I just, I just write, man. Just let it come out. If you're someone who's resistant to writing, literally sit down and write, I hate writing, I think this is so stupid, I don't want to journal, I don't think this is going to work, whatever. Write all that stuff out, I'm serious. And then watch how different you feel after you do it, and you'll read that stuff and go, dang, man, I had no idea I had this much resistance, I'm blocking myself. 
meditate, write, be in nature. In this book, letting go, um, it's so simple, the technique, and this is what I did with the panic stuff, the anxiety. You just have to sit and be with your emotions. So next time you get pissed off, don't try to do stuff. Don't try to talk and just see if you can be there alone and be angry. Allow yourself to be angry. You don't have to do anything. You don't have to throw it on anyone. You have to get online and talk shit. You don't have to call a friend. You don't have to do any of this stuff. Sit there. Be angry. Be angry. Be really angry. Be so pissed off. Whatever's pissing you off. And sit there and allow yourself to be angry. And if you need to, whatever, scream in a pillow. Go punch a punching bag. Let it out. But be with that emotion. What you'll notice is that when you actually give yourself permission to be with the emotion, the sadness, sit there and cry. Be sad. Man or woman, doesn't matter. Be in the emotion. That is the energy in motion trying to move through you. Don't repress it. Don't modify it. Don't think about it. Just sit there and be upset. Be whatever it is. The crazy thing is when you do this for a period of time, eventually, and the more you go into it, the better. What you'll notice is that afterwards, because eventually you get tired of doing it, you'll get tired of being angry, huff and puff and puff. You'll feel so much better and the space will be cleared. I always, I literally, I always call it throwing an adult fit. We're just kids. You're not any different than a child. Imagine when a little kid gets angry, they kick and scream and they go nuts. And if you give them permission to, let them go nuts. Let them scream and cry ah, nuts. We've all heard that kid that's like, jeez, oh my God. That's them letting out their emotion. Then what happens later? And I don't have kids, but I, I know this well enough, you know, friends and all this stuff. And if you're parents, you definitely know this. Just let them throw the fit. What happens after they throw the fit? They're exhausted. They're exhausted, but you know what? They feel better. They're like, oh, can I have some cookies now? I'm hungry, right? It's like it never happened. It's the same thing we have to do. Give yourself a permission to throw an adult fit. Don't project it onto anybody because it's not their problem to deal with, even if it was them that triggered you. What good is that going to do? It's about you. Give yourself. Go sit in silence. Go be pissed off in your bedroom. Punch a pillow. I'm serious. Scream. Sounds stupid. Do it. Throw the adult fit because when you let go of that emotional energy, you'll be free of it and you'll go, oh, oh my God, I feel so much better. Let it go. That's what it's about letting go. If you do a little each day, it won't be as intense and you'll notice your demeanor changing, your thinking mental clarity you'll notice your behavior changing you'll notice that you're changing because your energy is changing because you're letting go of the negative energy let it go as you clear the energy you're letting go and creating space for the new and better to enter your life if none of that resonates with you maybe go see a therapist go and you know do whatever you need to do. Go get a Reiki session. Go go to the spa. Do something. Read. Research. Research and learn techniques that resonate with you. Follow your gut. Whatever resonates with you, that's what's best for you because that's your soul guiding you to what's best for your unique soul, your own individual way. I'm sharing you some simple techniques that have really worked for me. You might do to have something else. Simply let go. Just be. You're exhausted because you're holding on to this stuff. That's what this video is about. You're tired because it's emotional baggage you can't let go of. You're refusing, you're choosing. Once you're aware of it, here's the thing. You're not choosing it to hold on to it. No, because you're not aware of it. But now that you are aware of it and this is what you're doing, you're choosing to hold on to it. You're choosing to not let go of the past. That's on you. It's a choice now. Drive yourself into the ground. Carry on the thousand pound weight. Carry around all the emotional baggage. Go for it. Knock yourself out. That's why you're exhausted. That's what this video is about. You're tired because you're holding on to stuff. You're holding on to emotional baggage. You're holding on to stuff that's draining your energy. You're walking around with so much weight. And the more trauma, the more crappy cycles and things that you've experienced in your life, the more crap you're holding on to. And the less that you've done things like this about address it and let go of, the more you're holding on to, the more it's weighing down. That's why you're exhausted. People have told me so many times, they're like, oh, you're so young. You're like, what do you do to stay young? I'm like, dude, I'm just constantly clearing my energy, trying to not hold on to shit. You become lighter. You're being, your physical appearance, you glow. It becomes different. We all know people who like, you know, some dude who's like, you know, in his 30s or some woman who's like in her late 30s or 40s, she looked like she's 55, 60. Woo. 
a lot of people they look way older than they are it's because they're holding on to the baggage they're holding on to the stress the crazy thing is and i've seen this over time it's you can physically see people change that when you start to practice this they literally look younger because they're becoming a different per person because their energy is changing because they're letting go of the past it's big about a uh, big part of this is forgiveness but you know i need to make a whole video on forgiveness on itself a couple quotes for today last one's my favorite first one strength is knowing when to put down the weight you've been carrying it's not about holding on and trying to prove stuff to cover it up. It's about letting go. True strength involves confronting the negative energy and being vulnerable and letting it go. That's real strength. Second quote, you simply haven't lived until you've learned to let go. How can you live the life that you want when you're holding on to so much from the past? You have to let it go. The third one, Tit Nhat Hanh. Woo! Man, I wish I would have had a chance to meet him when he was alive. People have a hard time letting go of their suffering. Out of fear of the unknown, they prefer suffering that is familiar. People have a hard time letting go of their suffering. Out of fear of the unknown, they prefer suffering that is familiar. Let that one sink in. Fear of the unknown. That's what I talked about yesterday too, about the anxiety. The anxiety comes from the unknown. You're unsure about the future because you don't trust. So we disassociate. We disassociate, we repress and suppress the emotions. You gotta let this stuff go, guys. Love you so much. Oracle card of the day. Tap three times to clear the energy. We ask for the purest, the most divine truth. My highest good, your highest good, the highest good of the collective. Ooh, there it goes, a little net cracker. What do we got for today? What's spirit gonna say? That's the one. I get this feeling, I wanna be where you are. John Summit, he's not, I'm not even a big John, I love EDM, but not a big John, he's all right, whatever. Three of Ariel, please look at the picture first, see what resonates with you, because that picture, whatever images, whatever thoughts, whatever feelings are coming up, colors in the picture, whatever, that's a message for you, reflect on it, your soul's trying to speak to you. Message of the day, do what you love. A time of great personal growth in your career or artistic endeavors working with others in a cooperative manner this guy is honing his craft do what you love doing more of what you love will bring more joy into your life the more you release the past the more room you have for more joy coming into your life a lot of you I'm talking about starting your own business about getting out of the job that you don't like focus on your craft the skill set that you need three of Ariel do what you love and it's important to follow your passions and do your very best work. There's a great talent and skill present. The task at hand can be a joyful experience and may bring recognition or financial rewards. This is a time of great personal growth in your career or artistic endeavors. Working with others in a happy, cooperative manner is important. Get the input of those around you, but don't be afraid to confidently share your ideas. Additional meanings of the card, a labor of love, being paid to be creative, awareness of your potential, being a mentor. Focus on what brings you joy because what brings you joy is probably what you're best at and you enjoy, obviously, doing the most and that's actually your gift. If you really follow that path, you'll probably end up making more money, being more successful, happy and fulfilled than you ever will in your life. Do what brings you joy. Let go of the past, guys, because you can't go into the future carrying all the stuff from the past or you can just might take you a lot longer but are you really becoming a different person if you're still holding on to all the stuff from the past no because that stuff is still defining you love you so much appreciate you guys i will see you for another video we're gonna put it out there that this one does not get corrupted and we get to post this one today but i'll see you next time love you so much peace